Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and all the core gamers out there. CAJ Man Triple Seven here, welcoming you to episode three of Metroid Prime 2 Echoes today. Last time we learned that there is a dark temple somewhere hidden within the reaches of Aether from unfortunately a deceased Luminoth warrior who fought fighting the Ing. But they said that there is a dark portal close by to actually getting to the dark world to get three keys that we may need to access the temple. So, without further ado, let's go do that. And unfortunately, I cannot go this way, so we must go backwards toward the other door, which is something I don't want to do, but that is okay. I wanted to s I remember there being an item over there, but I didn't remember it being that item. So, let us continue on through our adventure of Metroid Prime 2 Echoes. Also, last time, we picked up our Morph Ball Bombs again. I'm going to, like, jump around this thing so he doesn't attack me. And I'm also going to scan this really quick because I think there's a door behind it. No, there were... Oh, no, there's the Morph Ball Tunnel, though. Oh. A little tiny Morph Ball Tunnel, though. Which leads us to the map station. Which I did not pick up. And I can skip it because we don't need to see this cutscene. We, we see it way too many times. Woo! Cutscene skip! Anyways, you can see this area is somewhere we're not going to go for a while. Trust me, there's a reason. That will go too soon. But all back here is very important. However, we need to go, currently, right here, in this in this room. So we need to head out to the portal access. And how do we get to the portal access? Well, we have to climb through all the rooms we just did again. Um, I know it sucks, and I know I had to backtrack to go save, but... We gotta go into the dark world, guys, for the first time, and uh, it's not easy getting to the dark world. This game progresses very quick, um, in all of its progression, so uh, you notice that a piece of lightning just struck in front of me. And right here, actually, we're gonna have another piece of lore. History, 30% Golden Age, Paradise. Aether was a fertile age world with bountiful fields and oceans. The native creatures were gentle were gentle compared to other worlds we had encountered. We settled in a mountain region at first in the cliffside dwellings. In time, we established settlements in the green forest of Torvis and the fertile plains of Aegon. A great temple was built between our three domains, a place of peace and a monument to our accomplishment. It was the time of harmony for our people. So I actually do want to say this, but in Metroid Prime 1... As you remember, I pulled off that scan dash uh, to reach a Chozo artifact early in Metroid Prime 1 that I couldn't get. Scan dashing is indeed in Metroid Prime 2. Um, it is the exact same method. You press both triggers at the exact same time. Owie. Um, it's the exact same method to do a scan dash. You press both triggers at the same time, and you uh, let go of the R trigger as you go and fly, and you scan dash in the direction you're holding the trigger for, as long as you don't fully scan the object uh that is the trick with the scan dash if you fully scan the object you're frozen in time for a few seconds and that cuts all your momentum off and you don't want that momentum being cut but scan dashing is a very useful thing and i might pull it off a, a few times in this playthrough um it's i rarely use it though you'll notice i won't use it uh near as much as i did in metroid prime one even then in metroid prime one i didn't use it much um for good reason of course but that's okay. So heading over here, we're going to see a lot of kinetic orb cannons, which is nice. And we're just going to fire ourselves up through, drop down here. And uh, if you notice right here, we've got a missile expansion behind this, but right here is he died 1.9 decades ago. Now this missile expansion, be careful so you don't touch the kinetic orb cannon. And uh, you can just pick up that missile expansion pretty quickly. Uh, I like picking up that missile expansion early. It gives me 15 or 20 missiles to work with. Uh, and right here, here we are in the portal uh, access or the portal terminal, which will allow us to access the dark world for the first time. Unfortunately, look who decided to show up. Our buddies, the space pirates, are here. And now there's more of them. Oh, but these space pirates. Oh, they are not ordinary space pirates. 
they're never ordinary space pirates, are they? I can skip this. They're just going to get attacked and infected and now turned into dark pirate troopers, which, by the way, look absolutely badass. Uh, but uh, they hurt a lot. If that, if that, if that many missiles does not tell you how, ma how long it took to actually kill him, um, then there's something wrong. We, we will have a method to deal with these troopers in time, folks. Right now, we do not have that method to destroy these troopers quick enough. And I just got a double, uh, a double missile pickup there. Uh, which is pretty nice. Also, I'll get two missiles for the price of one, and I'll pick up some health. And right down here is another piece of lore that I will read. The Light of Aether. The main energy controller was built in the Great Temple. Three sub-controllers were built in the temples of Torvis, Aegon, and Sanctuary. They controlled the energy of Aether, then radiated it over uh, the world to all who needed it. In time, we came to call this precious energy the Light of Aether. It brought an age of peace and prosperity to the Luminoth. I fell. Whoops. Now what I wanted to do... Uh, there was a Morph Ball bomb slot. If I had space jump, that'd be really easy uh, to get. There was a Morph Ball bomb slot over here that I need to activate. Which activates this elevator. Which I actually got stuck on. And now we're about to hear, or we're, we're going to hear a bit of a puzzle theme. This is, this is the puzzle theme, as I call it. Um, kind of a sudden change in music, of course, but... It works relatively well, and of course, unfortunately, remember how I said we were going to be dealing with war wasps in the future in the last episode? Mm, yeah, we're going to deal with them now because they suck. So they're everywhere in this game. There's even dark versions of them, which I, I hate. I, I hate war wasps in general, so. Did I roll through it in time? Am I behind the thing? Okay. Uh, sometimes if you don't ro roll through that in time, it will stop you, and you'll immediately push, be pushed down by the sand onto the ground level. Yes, that can happen, and that will happen. Uh, these, those are war wasps, but here are little, these little guys. If I can scan them. These guys are actually harder to scan. These are pill bugs. They're, uh, just, they're vulnerable to my morph ball bombs. But now I can morph ball bomb jump as much as I want. So essentially what you do with the pill bugs, very easy enemies to kill. Uh, you just kind of like drop a couple more ball bombs. They fall into them. You put, then you put bombs on top of their souls and, uh, and wreck their day. But there, that's going to give us the little, the sunbeam that we need. Uh, the sun now shines through the clouds. And that will allow us to access the main portal in the room. Because that is going to now energize... The main portal, and I can, I do like that I can skip all the cutscenes. Um, and we are automatically put in the safe place. But here we go, into what is going to be, um, into what's going to be the first trip into the dark world. Now this right here, notice, this this is a morph ball bomb slot, but it doesn't exist here. Why? Object scan targets in a state of dimensional flux, unable to complete the scan bomb slot. Fifty percent of its component atoms have been located in another dimension. Which means when we use the component in the other half, it should work in this half. And here we go. Our first trip. Into the dark world. Of course, I don't get to scan the dark portal. And there we go. And here we go. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. To Dark Aether.
This shield is protective. We come out of the shield, notice she gets hurt. That's going to play completely real into what happens in this game. Or what happens right now. Dark Ether's atmosphere is dangerous. So starting off, these are uh, blade pods. These are essentially the Aegon item holders uh, for uh, Dark Aether, which is nice. And if I scan this one more time, this will indeed activate this portal. I can skip the cutscene. This will activate the light portal. And I'm just going to be scanning the light portal here. Uh, this takes us back into Light Aether. And we're going to want to step into this safe zone. And some safe zones must be shot to function. This one, this is a Luminov Light Crystal. Uh, it produces energy. And as if you notice, my house slowly goes up. And that one, energized safe zones don't last forever. This is very important uh, into the Dark Aether. This is a light beacon. These are much smaller than the crystals as the crystals are a set shield. The beacons only last for so long. But right here is that bomb slot that I was talking about. That was in a state of dimensional flux from the last room. And because we use it here, it's going to show your Light World counterpart. That, that gate on the Light World has also now raised. Transdimensional activity has been detected. Which simply means we can now go that way. Simple, right? Device is back on Aether. So right over here, this little thing on the wall. Let's see if I can get them. There, there they are. There they are. Oh, you suck. Get back here. Why don't you show up for me? These are inglets. Uh, they're wall crawling. Uh, they're wall crawling bioforms. Pretty easy to kill. Uh, very easy to kill. Actually, one charge shot actually obliterates these guys. Um, and uh, yeah, they're just they're uh, just you know threats. Notice they try and stay out of the shield. They won't cut. They can come into the shield if they would like. But they choose not to. They do not like light. Uh, which is really cool. This is where the light and dark mechanic really comes into play. Because they don't like light. I'm just gonna... I, I'm taking out as many of them as I can right now. Uh, because there is quite a bit we have to do. And look how fast my health goes down in uh, Dark Aether. It goes down pretty quick. Uh, there is an upgrade later that we'll be able to pick up. I'm sure by the thumbnail, you guys actually know what the upgrade already looks like by the thumbnail of these videos. Uh, my inkling were in the Samus armor, uh, the Samus Aaron armor. That's actually the armor in the game uh, that we'll be picking up later. Darkling, fl dark, uh, Darkling flyers. These are night barbs. They're very weak. They're like the the sand bats, uh, and you can just do that. I'm going to. Not save. Oh, I can skip this kind of cool thing. I'm not going to save. But I'm definitely going to restore energy here. Uh, very important that I do restore some energy here. Because we do have a boss coming up shortly. In fact, this boss is a lot sooner than I remember it being. Notice we can't go into that door down there, however. If we follow the path over here. We're going to be met by... What is a warrior-ing? Uh, these guys are not fun to deal with. If they stand in the shield, they do take damage. Uh, but they will charge you. However, like I said, they don't like the light. They'll try and surround you constantly. They'll try and get you uh, in a different way. Uh, but notice, if you stay inside these crystals, I will be gaining health while he just stands there and looks stupid. And fires light beams at me. Um, it, it's kind of funny that they're dark, but they have light-powered weapons. Uh, you would think the light-powered weapons wouldn't do wouldn't do good damage against me, but alas, they are so very wrong. And this is uh, technically our first mini boss, actually. Our first warrior ing is a is a mini boss. Uh, I'm gonna just sit behind here because you can't hit me. Ah, scum! I can try and draw his attack if I want to as well, uh, which is kind of nice. But, I mean, I need to get rid of him first. And he is... They they do have a lot of health. Uh, I'm going to fire a missile at you. Did I, I kill you? There it is. Two more missiles. Oh, my goodness. 
And then notice they just fade off into blackness, which is it's pretty cool. I'm not gonna lie, it's it's pretty cool. So we're gonna jump back over here into another safe zone, and right here is another new creature. This is a light bringer. It's a light it's a light generating forager. Stay in the shield, you'll be safe. Don't stay in the shield, you, you you'll take a lot of damage. You don't want you don't want to be taking damage. No one wants to be taking damage here. Especially in Light Aether, but as long as I stand by these crystals, luckily these crystals actually can't break. As long as I stand by these crystals, I will recover health slowly over time, but it only gets better uh, the more and more weapons we get. Uh, and I'll show you why, because uh, that zone blinking means it is now almost time to fade. So I need to use this Lightbringer. Stay I'm staying in the shield to be careful. And I need to use this bridge to get slowly across to the other side. I mean, you don't really have to risk taking as long as you do there, but I do anyway. Because um, this is hard mode. You never know when you're going to take a lot of damage. Like right now, I'm taking a ton of damage just rolling. And obviously, you see here, that's the spider ball track. I can't activate that. Spider ball, as you know, was from Metroid Prime 1. It's going to be a long while before we get it in Metroid Prime 2. 96, 97, uh, that's not bad health. And this, yes, this is it right here. The Judgment Pit. So, who's ready for another boss? I know I am. I don't know if you guys are, but, uh, here we go. Let's see if you can figure out what item he has. Without seeing his name. Ah, damn it. His name appeared too fast. <laughs> this is the Jump Guardian. Uh, he is the guardian of my precious Space Jump boots, and I want them back. They don't look good on you. They don't look good on you at all. Uh, so the Jump Guardian, he's got a lot of health, but he charges this up. And when he charges that up, he becomes invulnerable. You want to jump over his Shockwave like I failed to do so hard there. Um... But don't get hit by these beams, uh, either, because those beams will knock you out of the pit. So he's kind of like he's kind of just like a warrior ing fight, only he's just kind of an amped up warrior ing that stole my shoes. And you can see how much damage my missiles actually do to him. They do like nothing. Like, let, let, let me just fire a couple off, and you'll see. A pretty easy boss, though, honestly. Uh, a lot of the bosses in Aegon Waste are super easy, with the exception of the of the area boss. Uh, of the dark area, the dark uh, version area boss. Uh, the item upgrade bosses are usually pretty simple to deal with. Uh... Hence why Jump Guardian is a joke. Um, he's already at half health, and I, I I could care less about how much damage he's doing to me. Just because of how weak he is. Alright, I'm out of missiles, but that's alright. I don't want to get pushed out of your zone. No thanks. No thanks. He can walk into the zone. As you saw, he did just cross through the light. Uh, because he's so super powered, he will not take damage from um, the, the zone itself. Uh, but he's... Um, I really have nothing to say other than about the jump guardian. He's just really easy. Um, if I could jump over those shockwaves, that'd be great. Uh, but unfortunately, I'm not having a lot of luck doing that. But once he gets to half health, of course, he he jumps twice in a row. I finally jumped over that shockwave. Oh, look at me. Ha ha ha, I'm a god. Uh, charge shots are really the way to go on, on Jump Guardian here. Oh, he's gonna jump behind me, isn't he? Yep. No, he's gonna jump right here. And there are little ing pods throughout the fight that I can actually... That helps me quite a bit. My missiles still do, like, no damage, but... It's alright. I, I owe respect the fact that the Jump Guardian, you know, has no health. Even though I'm playing on hard, he, I can say he has no health, because I can. How dare you? Why would you do such a thing? To 
Yeah, that's why you don't want to be outside the zone. Right there. You take a lot of damage very quickly against uh, these Guardians. Uh, and those light beams, they do push you back. It's, it's not something you want to be dealing with. But he's a lot faster in his second phase. This is technically a phase 2 jump Guardian right now. Um, as soon as you get any of the bosses in this game to half health, they go phase 2. Unlike the first game where, I mean, they may have had a specific attack that they use in phase 2. Uh, this guy just jumps twice. That's it. That's his gimmick. Just jumps twice. Die! Ah, frick. Die! There we go. My missile chased him down. Freaking jump guardian, guys. Like, he's just an annoying... He's just an annoying boss. He's not a fun boss. He's an annoying boss. But, uh, space jump boots. Thank you. He, uh, I got my shoes back, guys. Don't worry. No one, no one steals my shoes and gets away with it. Nobody. I don't like anybody stealing. You want to steal my shoes? No, no, no. My shoes! Space jump boots! I guess Samus decided to keep the space jump boots she got off of town for. <laughs> ah, ah. Right, boom. So right in here is that portal that leads back to the light world. We're not going to do that quite yet. Because now that we have space jump boots, there are still three dark keys that we have to collect somewhere in the dark world. So I'm actually going to start by going to go get the one key right now, which I think I can get if I make this jump. I don't know if I can make... I don't remember if I can make this... Oh, no. I have to do this. There we go. There we go. And right here, we should be picking up our first key in a moment. If you rec actually, this is not going to be the first key. This is going to be the path to the temple. This is the Aegon Temple. This is the Dark Aegon Temple. Three keys are required to access uh, access this door. We could go pick up one key now. Because it's literally on that door to the left. Am I going to be that guy and go pick up that key now? No. No, I'm not. Um, so, because that key is the easy key to pick up. We, we, we're not gonna, we don't go pick up the easy key. Uh, we leave the easy key to the end. So, with that, our journey now is going to be taking us back into the light world. Uh, by going back through that door right there. And because we are now entering the light world again, things are going to be different. You can see the damage that damage you do receive is absolutely ridiculous in in the uh, dark world here with the with the current suit we're wearing the damage we take is is not fun um, unfortunately for me I'm gonna need some energy here because I'm pretty sure I'm about to get attacked no cool no space pirates I'm, I'm, I'm good with this Skip this, and moving back into the light world we go. And we're not quite done yet, but notice that gate opened up. So good for us, but, uh, oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Hi guys, bye. Bye! Bye, you have terrible aim. But, ah, okay, one of you. One of you has good aim. But only one. 
And with that, we can pop up and use this bomb. And grab another missile expansion to get 25 missiles already in the game. Out of a total of 255. Wish I was joking saying that number. I'm not. There's more missiles in this game than there are in Metroid Prime uh, 2. But I want to thank everybody for watching Metroid Prime 2, Episode 3. Next time, we're going to be exploring an area we haven't quite explored yet because we didn't have the right upgrade to do it. And it's going to be this entire section back here. It's a very cool section. We're going to have a lot of nice light and dark mechanics going through that. But I want to thank you all for watching. And until then, this is CAJMan777 signing off. Stay safe, everybody.